right that there's a consensus among a minuscule number of architects and engineers, tiny number, there are a couple of them are perfectly serious, they are not doing what scientists and engineers do when they think they've discovered something. What you do, when you think you've discovered something, what you do is write articles in scientific journals, uh, give talks at the professional societies, uh, go to the civil engineering department at MIT or Florida or wherever you are, and present your results, uh, and uh, then proceed to try to convince the national academies, the professional society of physicists and civil engineers, the departments in the major universities, convince them that you've discovered something. Now, there happen to be a lot of people around who spent an hour on the internet and think they know a lot of physics, but it doesn't work like that. So the thing to do is pretty straightforward. Do what scientists and engineers do who think they've made a discovery. Now, when this is brought up, as it has been, uh, there are one or two minor articles, like this one article that appeared in an online a journal which claims to have found, where someone claims to have found traces of nanothermite in Building 7. Uh, I don't know what that means. You don't know what that means. Uh, but if it means anything, bring it to the attention of the scientific community. That's a couple of other fragments like that. So yes, there are, uh, there's a small group of people who believe this, and there's a straightforward way to proceed. Now, when this is brought up, there's a standard reaction. The scientists and engineers and professional societies and physicists are so intimidated by the government that they're afraid to take, to, they don't have the courage to take this position. Anyone who has any part, record of part, any familiarity with political activism knows that this is one of the safest things you can do. It's almost riskless. Uh, people take risks far beyond this constantly, including scientists and engineers. I can have run through and can run through many examples. I mean, you know, it's kind of a, maybe people will laugh at you, but that's about it. It's an almost riskless position. So that can't be the reason why nobody's convinced. However, there's a much more deeper issue, which has been brought up repeatedly, and I have yet to hear a response to it. There happens to be, whatever one thinks about Building 7, I have no opinion. I, I don't ha know as much uh, science and engineering as the people who believe that they have an answer to this. Uh, so I am willing to let the professional societies uh, determine it if they get the information. So whatever the facts, uh, there's just overwhelming evidence that the Bush administration wasn't involved. Very elementary evidence. You don't have to be a physicist to understand it. You just have to think for a minute, okay? So let's think for a minute. The, uh, there's a couple of facts which are uncontroversial, right? One fact that is uncontroversial is that the Bush administration desperately wanted to invade Iraq. That's a long-standing goal. There's good reasons for it, you know, second largest energy resources in the world, right in the middle of the world's major uh, energy producing region, you know, perfectly obvious reasons, which they in fact later stated, but they were obvious anyway. So they wanted to invade Iraq, one uncontroversial fact. Second uncontroversial fact, they didn't blame the 9-11 uh, on Iraqis, they blamed it on Saudis, mainly. That's their major ally. So they blamed it on people from their major ally not on the country that they wanted to invade. The third uncontroversial fact, unless they're total lunatics, they would have blamed it on Iraqis if they were involved in any way. That would have given them a open season on invading Iraq, a total support, international support, a UN resolution, uh, no need to concoct uh, wild stories about uh, the weapons of mass destruction and the uh, contacts between Saddam and Al-Qaeda, which of course quickly exploded, discrediting them. Uh, no reason to invade Afghanistan, which was mostly a waste of time for them. But they didn't. Well, 
the, the conclusion is pretty straightforward. Either they are total lunatics or they weren't involved, and they're not total lunatics. 